Oh, shalom, shalom. It's uh, Brother Osmond Walsh once again with another lesson. First and foremost, we're going to give our praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rukakadash. That's our praise to the Heavenly Father, His Son's name of the world, in the call of Jesus Christ, real name in Hebrew, Yahweh Shah. Also give him praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Spirit as well. I also want to say shalom to all the sincere hearted Akion Wa Akwa. That's in this truth, in truth and in sincerity. I want to give double honors unto my uh, elders who taught me this truth. So today's just, um, you know, some more, um, basically some more uh, headlines on the way from current events that's going on. All right. And, uh, you know, like we <laughs> often mention, it's uh, the Lord is just throwing, you know, judgments out and flurries, man. You know, it's too much to keep up with now, you know. As soon as one brother goes to something, you know, another thing pops off. Then another then another thing pops off, you know. So it's it's always something, man, you know. Um, this is how we know that our redemption is drawn nigh, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me grab this real quick in the book of uh, Zephaniah 3. This is uh, Zephaniah 3 and 5. He says, the just Yahweh, right, because he's... The uh, only true just power, man. He knows exactly how to carry out his judgments in justice and in righteousness, man. Right? Because Proverbs 11 and 1, a false balance is an abomination to Yahweh, right? And this current society that we live in, everything is weighed off of unjust balances, man. You know, even, you know, one may go into the courtroom, the court of law, you know, and although the judge has those balance beams, uh, you know, as a representation of everything being fair. Well, this current society is leaning way too far on the left, man. But Yahweh, he's going to bring everything to balance, man. Right. And how is that going to uh, come into play? Well, Revelation 13, 9 and 10, those who led the children of Israel to captivity, they're going to be led into captivity. Right. So but before all those things, before that happens, the Lord is basically going to be judging our enemies. Right. Um you know, with, with particular judgments. And what we're going to get into tonight briefly, uh, it's going to be a short video, what we're going to get into tonight briefly uh, is just <clears throat> two two things that's going on right now that's really about to uh, humble these damn Babylonians, man, All right? And it says, uh, the just Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Yeah, like Job says, he says, who can ever blame God or charge God with sin? None, man, All right? He says, every morning, doth he bring his judgment to light, all right? And this is dual fold. Well, you know, one application is literally, you know, as soon as you wake up every single morning, you always get a headline on your, on your phone, what just happened while you're sleeping or you turn on the news, you know, while you drink your coffee, or while you drink your coffee and you literally see <laughs> his judgment being brought to light, is being displayed. And also on the other, uh, the other fold of it, right? Uh, morning is also symbolic as until when Yahweh Shah comes because he's known that as the bright and morning star, right? And he's going to be the one that's going to be bringing these judgments. Well, he's the one who's bringing these judgments. So every morning, right, <laughs> he's bringing his judgment to light. He says, and he felleth not, right? But the unjust knoweth no shame, right? And Esau, Edom, we know that he's the unjust and the two thirds of our people, they're the unjust because they follow into this man's ways and ideologies and philosophies, right? And they know no shame, man. This is why, like, 2 Timothy chapter 3 stated, he says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, meaning they're going to grow worse and worse, you know? <laughs> scoffers that you may have known a year ago, guess what? They're a, a double-fold scoffer now, man, right? Your family members who were, you know, low-level demons last year, right? <laughs> they're double-fold uh, demons now, you know? <laughs> All right, everybody's getting worse while the elect, while we're getting the hopefully elect, while we're getting more, more and more perfected and polished up and refined into this fiery furnace of affliction. Right. And it's really uh displaying as us having to be patient in this hell, man. All right. <laughs> we're literally sitting in this burning house, man. Just getting everything melted off of us. All right. But nonetheless, let's uh let's go over here real quick. So this is a headline off of endtimeheadlines.org. <clears throat> and it says, grasshopper swarms devouring crops all over the Western US 
are now so big they can be seen on the radar. Yeah, let's look at that again. Grasshopper swarms devouring crops all over the western U.S. are now so big they can be seen on the radar. This is July 5th, man. All right, this is put out today, <laughs> a day after these proud-ass Americans and, and retarded-ass niggas were celebrating 4th of July. All right, now here the Lord is humbling your ass with a bug. <laughs> all right, because of a bug, your ass is about to starve to death, man. All right, so this is a, one of the ways how the Lord humbles you, man. All right, it's by using the basis of things. Let's grab that real quick. The Lord loves to use small things, despise things to bring down the proud. Look at David and Goliath. All right. <laughs> this is uh 1 Corinthians 1. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I start at verse 27. He says, but Yahweh have chosen the foolish things of the world. All right. Something such as a, a grasshopper. All right. He says to confound the wise. Esau, Edom, they are confounded right now. Although we know that they want this, this, this famine. Right. Although we know that they're really behind the scenes of everything. But in essence, it's the Lord doing all this. All right. And they're confounded. They didn't they weren't expecting this, man. All right. He says, and Yahweh have chosen the weak things of the world. All right. <laughs> to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, base means low. Our grasshopper is very low, man. All right, it says, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. Yeah, everybody despises a grasshopper. You know, nobody sees a, a use or a purpose for a grasshopper. It says, and the base things of the world and things which are despised have Yahweh chosen, yea, and things which are not to be brought to not things that are. So the Lord is using something as simple as this, uh, this grasshopper to bring to not the, the um, <clears throat> these crops over here, man. All right, although they're GMO anyway, all right, the Lord is just really, once again, uh, ushering in this famine, all right? And once again, this should raise uh, your spiritual antennas, if you will, all right? Where else ha can you read in the Bible or recollect in the story of the Bible where the Lord uh, basically plagued a land you know, with grasshoppers, also known as locusts, because locusts are grasshoppers. Yeah, you guessed it, Egypt. All right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, let's just go into that account briefly. This is, uh, Exodus 10. So look at the title. It says, The Plague of Locusts. It says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. And Yahweh, and heart once again means mind. Also going to show you who controls and who rules the minds of men. All right, Yahweh, he's the one who hardened Pharaoh's mind, just like he's hardening Esau's mind and the two-thirds mind. All right, he says, I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. All right, so the Lord is just sitting back in the heavens, man, All right, just <laughs> patiently waiting, All right? Well, he's been waiting. Now he's starting to, you know, throw a couple of flurries out here, you know, with some of the signs that he's been wanting to show. All right, because we got to remember, brothers and sisters, you know, those of you who's anxiously, you know, desiring, you know, the, the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Hashem Shah, right? We, we often touch on, you know, how patient, you know, we have to be. But consider how, how patient Yahweh Shah is, right? He doesn't even know when the day he's going to come. The Heavenly Father, according to scriptures, only the Heavenly Father knows when Yahweh Shah is coming. Yahweh Shah doesn't even know. But we do know this in Isaiah chapter 63. Let's grab that real quick. Isaiah 63, verse 4 says, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. And who is this? This is Yahweh Shah because he's the one bringing the uh, wreaking havoc. He's the one that's going to be judging planet Earth. He says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. Yeah, the year when he redeems us out of this place, the, the, the place, I mean, the time when he takes us up out of this, the, the day that he takes us out of this spiritual Egypt, right? So as, as anxious and as, you know, patiently as we are waiting, Yahweh Shah is, <laughs> is just more, um, is just more looking forward to it than you are, right? But now is the time, as a matter of fact, let's grab this. This is Psalms 119 and 126. 
Now's the time for Yahweh to be working. And he is. He says, Psalms 119, verse 126, it is time for thee, O Yahweh, to work, for they have made void thy law. See that? <laughs> Let's read that again. It is time for thee, Yahweh, to work, for they have made void thy law. And we see Yahweh's works. All right? <laughs> we see Yahweh's works, man, and his son's works. All right? Because the earth... These are the inhabitants of the world. They have corrupted his planet, right? They have corrupted his people. They've corrupted themselves, right? Everything that the Lord deemed good, declared good in Genesis 1, right? This man, you know, has turned around and said that uh, <laughs> it's not good. And everything that the Lord declared abominable, this man said that it's good, right? So he's turned his place upside down. All right, Amos chapter five. I mean, uh, Isaiah chapter five. All right, he says that. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's just grab that real quick. All right, because this is why the Lord is is doing this into this place. One of the reasons this is Isaiah five. And uh, let's see where is it at. Yep, Isaiah five and uh, twenty. It says, woe unto them that call evil good. See that? Who does that? Esau, eat them. They call evil good. All right? The Lord <laughs> says that it's an abomination for homosexuals to, you know, <laughs> be homosexuals. They said it's a good thing. All right? You can have pride in it. All right? It says, um, it says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Yeah, they're calling the good, right, that, that the Lord has declared good. They're calling that evil. All right, <laughs> the law sets commandments. Oh, that's done away with. Oh man, that's evil. All right, it says that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So they're turning everything upside down. They're basically being, um, they're opposers to the plans and intents of Yahweh Shah. But nonetheless, let's go to verse two. And it says, and that going back to uh, ancient Egypt. Touching back on these uh, these locusts. And he says that, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of my son and of thy son's sons what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that you may note how that I am your house. So this is one of the reasons why the Lord is going to basically be uh, flexing when he's uh, before he sends his son, Yahweh Shah, to come judge his place. All right? He's going to send particular signs that you would have never dreamed of, man. Would have never thought of. Why? So you won't ever forget it, right? This is why we're still talking about ancient Egypt today and what the Lord has done for the children of Israel, all right? The very fact that we're still talking about ancient Egypt and how the Lord redeemed us out of that place, all right? Thousands upon thousands of years ago, going to show you what type of power, all right? <laughs> and what type of judgment he wreaked upon that place. Well, guess what? Uh, Babylon, spiritual Egypt, is going to get a greater judgment than that. Let's prove that real quick. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 16. Uh, Jeremiah 16. Yep. Let's see what the NLT says. Hmm. Yeah, I like this. Jeremiah 16 and 14 in the NLT. It says, but the time is coming, says Yahweh, when people who are taking an oath will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives, who rescued the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. All right, so there's going to be a time to where we're not even going to be talking about, you know, now, of course, we're going to remember it, but, you know, uh, we're not going to be talking about it like that, you know, uh, how the Lord delivered us from Egypt. Why? Verse 15, instead they will say, as surely as Yahweh lives, who brought the people of Israel back to their own land from the land of the north and from all the countries to which he had exiled them. For I will bring them back to this land that I gave their ancestors. All right. So the Lord is basically going to um, make this make the judgment on Egypt, uh, physical Egypt, look pale in comparison to uh, compared to what he's about to wreak today. Right, and he's starting right here with these <laughs> with something as simple as a grasshopper. 
Verse 3 says, And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, power of the Hebrews, how long would thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. All right. Verse 4, he says, Else, if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locust into thy coast. Going to show you that it was the prophets. All right. Of course, it was Yahweh Bashem Shah who brought, who's been bringing these catastrophes here. But guess who spoke these things into existence? The prophets. Just like Moses, right? <laughs> Just like Moses and uh, uh, Aaron did in the time of old. Well, guess what? We come in the stead of Moses and Aaron, man. Right? Yahweh has commissioned us. He, he's risen us as prophets in the land of Egypt. And he commissioned us, man, with a particular message. That's basically redemption for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, right? And a part of that, we prophesy uh, mourning, lamentation, and woe, destruction, war, famine, and all types of pestilences upon this place, just like all the prophets of old did, right? So we're the reason why these locusts are here. And, and guess what? These Babylonians know it too, man. All right? Verse 5, he says, and they shall cover the face of the earth. See, let's go back to the article. Look at this. This is on a radar. Let's just read a little bit of it. It says um, the hot. It says the hot, dry conditions in the western half of the nation have created. Uh, let me, as a matter of fact, let me just start up here. <clears throat> it says I had written about this before, but this story just got a whole lot stranger. Whew. I'm glad they brought that word "stranger" too, man. Right? Because this is some of the strange acts that Yahweh Bashmael Shah said that he will be doing. It's Isaiah 28, verse 21. For Yahweh shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work. Right? Because David says, it is time for thee, O Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. So the Lord is working. It says, it, that he may do his work, his strange work. See that? His strange work. All right? And to bring past his act, his strange act. Right? And here <laughs> you got to, you know, a Babylonian writing about it says things just got a whole lot stranger. Yeah, this is the strange works and the strange acts of the Abashmael Shah. Who would have ever known that he would have used some locusts to confound, you know, a so called modern society that has technology, you know, underground bunkers that has, you know, uh, uh, railways, you know, uh, fighter jets, satellites. But yet he uses a grasshopper. <laughs> hey man hey you can never you can never outsmart your howl man All right nonetheless it says in previous years most americans haven't been too concerned when giant swarms of insects has devoured crops on the other side of the globe All right because these americans man they're all they're worried about is them all they're looking at is <laughs> is their own little bubble all right but when things start getting close to home, that's when they start panicking, right? And it is, man. He says, but now this is actually happening right here in the good old United States of America on a massive scale, right? Says the hot, dry con conditions in the western half of the nation have created ideal conditions for grasshoppers to flourish. And millions upon millions of them are now wreaking havoc wherever they go. In fact, the National Weather Service says that some of the grasshopper swarms are so large that they are showing up on the radar. See that? Showing up on the radar. If something's showing up on the radar, that means what? You can't see the earth, right? That's Exodus 10 and 5. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hell and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses and the houses of thy servants and the houses of the, of the Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon earth until this day. And he turned himself and went out unto Pharaoh. So once again, man, hey, this spiritual Egypt is getting judged with a, in a similar fashion. Right, although according to biblical prophecy, it's going to be in a worse fashion, but it's being judged, it's starting to be judged in a similar fashion 
as ancient Egypt, man. Right? So let's keep going. Let's go over here. Uh, let's go to this. Um, I want to show you this, right? Because also <clears throat> in the midst of what's going on uh, with the uh, with the grasshoppers, oh, uh, let's let's also go into something real quick, right? For you gainsayers who might say, "Well, a locust isn't the same as a grasshopper." Let's just go into it. All right. Uh, let's find that real quick. Okay, verse four. Let's go into the Hebrew word for locust. Strong's H six ninety seven. Add a bed. All right. Look down here. It says locust, locust, grasshopper. So they're the same, same family. <laughs> All right. So here you are, man. History repeats itself. As a matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. It's Ecclesiastes one and um, nine. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There's nothing new, right? This is why for, for you who take biblical prophecy serious, what do you often find yourself studying? History, right? Because if you know the history, you know what's going to happen, man. All right. <laughs> and what's uh what's a trending uh pattern? Whenever a kingdom gets heightened in its sin, whenever a kingdom gets very haughty and prideful, what happens after that? Shortly after that, they fall out of power, man. And somebody else is another nation is ushered in. Well, guess what? That other nation will be none other than so-called consisted of the so-called black Hispanic and Native Americans, which are the true Hebrew Israelites, man. All right. Let's go over here to uh to this. It says California begs for more electricity <laughs> as shift to renewable power, right? Leaves states in the dark, right? Because one of that new renewable power is going into is their uh, their water, right? One of the largest reservoirs out there is drying up. Right at a very, very rapid rate. I did a video about it, you know, almost a month ago now, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, and I was just, you know, kind of uh, looking back, uh, looking at the uh, the current statistics of it now, and it's dropped even more, man. Right? So, <clears throat> and that water, that reservoir is basically uh, responsible for the hydropower that that uh, basically feeds electricity to. Um, to over a million homes, man. All right, so a lot of people are about to be left in darkness. Something else that happened in ancient Egypt, the Lord struck that place with uh, massive darkness. So here we are, man. All right. The state of California is currently facing the worst drought in 1,200 years. Come on, man. 1,200 years? So this the Lord, man, waking you people up, showing you, who, reminding you who's boss, man. See, y'all y'all been sleeping on your house by Shemal Shah, but he's waking up, man. And as a consequence of such extreme weather conditions, Water in key reservoirs is dropping to dangerously low levels, which is forcing the shutdown of major hydroelectric power plants and leaving the state in the dark amid one of the hottest summers ever recorded. The relentless drought and extreme heat, both worsened by climate change, are critically straining California's already taxed electric grid and pushing the water supply at Northern California's Lake Oroville to deplete rapidly. Early last month, the water level in Lake Oroville, the state's second largest reservoir, was so low that hundreds of houseboats were hauled out because there wasn't enough water to hold them. Today, however, state officials revealed the water level in the lake is even lower. In fact, hey, just look at the comparison. The one on your left, you know, that's uh, that's it at normal levels. But now you look at it on the right, <laughs> man, they're, they're on their last drop, man. In fact, water is at such alarming levels that the Edward Hyatt power plant is being forced to close for the first time since it opened in 1967, according to California Energy Commission spokesperson Lindsay Berkeley. 
Typically, when the power plant is operating at full capacity, the lake's water is pumped through underground facilities to generate electricity that can power up to 800,000 homes. This means that now all of these homes are at risk of facing severe power outages throughout the whole summer. And that risk is eventually it's just a matter of time until it turns from a risk to a reality. So that's where we're at, man. That's where we're at. And the Lord is issuing out his judgments from day to day, morning to morning. Guarantee you, when you wake up tomorrow morning on your way to work, that crappy ass job where you work at, you're going to hear something else on the radio. What's going on? All right, but just remember, man, this is how about your shot. Make him good his word, man. All right. Let's get this. It's uh, Jeremiah 30. I mean, it's like it. Jeremiah 50, 38. The NLT says, the sword, right? will even strike her water supply, causing it to dry up, all right? And the whole connotation in this chapter is speaking about Babylon the Great, all right? It says the sword will even strike her water supply, causing it to dry up, all right? And we just saw that real time, man, all right? Her water supply is drying up. It says, and hey, I don't even have to break that scripture down, man. All right, you can literally just look at it. <laughs> it says, and why? Because the whole land is filled with idols, and the people are madly in love with them. Yeah, and the chiefest of idol is who? The so-called white man. Jake's head is so far up the so-called white man's ass, man. The Lord is just going to have to um, strike Jake along with this man. All right? Jake's going to have to die the death of an infidel. Two-thirds of Jake's anyway, not the repentant. It's Joel chapter. I will go into the first chapter, but I don't want to carry this out too long. Let me just get one last scripture. Luke 13. Verse one, start at verse, uh, let me just go to verse three, it says, and I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish, all right? So I bring the scripture out, man, because this is what it's all about at the end of the day, preaching repentance unto um, the hopeful elected, well, to all of Israel, man, all right? For the kingdom of heaven is not, man, all right? Repent and do the first works. As a matter of fact, let's grab that. Revelation 2 and 5. All right. It says, this is Yahweh Shah speaking. Remember, remember, therefore, from whence you are fallen. All right. And this, and this is also a cut, man. You know, on the Christianity, you know, um, doctrine. You know, talking about how Lucifer fell out of heaven. Right. I was just listening to an elder going to that. And I was talking to, uh, you know, to my lady last night about it. You know, and also some some silly ass Christians, some, some Christian I was talking to on the phone, man. That was really under the influence and thinking that <laughs> Satan fell out of the sky. All right. But no, it's just talking about you fall down a rulership. All right. So he's talking to the Israelites. Remember, therefore, from whence you are falling. All right. And when do we fall, man? When we start partaking into idolatry and start breaking the law, such commandments of Yahweh Shemal Shah. All right. He says, and repent. All right. Let's go into that word repent. All right, because this is what it's all about, man. All right, repent. It says to change one's mind, to change one's mind for the better, heartily to amend with abhorrence, meaning hatred of one's past sins. That's repentance, man. You hate what you used to do. You hate the old man that you were. That's true repentance. And Yahweh Shah said in Luke 13 and 3, unless you repent, you're going to perish. Many repent or die, man. There's no, there's no sweet way to cut it, man. All right, because the time is at hand. Y'all see this stuff that we bring it up. So there's only one thing that you can do, must do, and should do. Repent. Nothing else matters, man. All right, let's go back. Revelation 2 and 5. Remember, therefore, for whence you were fallen, and repent and do the first works. And what's the first works? Picking up where you left off, man. Put your hand back on the plow. Keep the law, set your commandments to your best of your ability. And have faith in the world and who the world in the cause Jesus Christ, all right? Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Have faith in him, man. All right, he says, or else I will come unto you quickly. <laughs> so he says, if you don't do this, I will come unto you quickly and I will remove your candlestick out of his place. What does that mean? He's going to remove that light of understanding, he's going to remove that enlightening, I mean, that enlightenment from you, all right? And we've seen that, man. It says, or else I will come unto you quickly and remove your candlestick out of his place, except you repent. All right, so this is the time for you to repent, man. All right, time for you to wake up out of your slumber and realize what's going on. All right, so 
nonetheless, man, I hope you was edified with that. DTA, blah, blah, blah. Kwame Sharala, inshallah.